Hello, I'm Susan Rizzo, your Albany County Comptroller. I'm here to deliver Albany County's annual State of the Fisc. I'm continuing the annual tradition and will discuss the 2020 financial results. As a newly elected Comptroller, 2020 was my first year in office. During my first year, the county was hit with an unprecedented pandemic. We have lost so many. I would like to extend my deepest condolences to the families and friends that have lost loved ones in this once in a century pandemic. The county's first responders and other frontline workers have been on the front line helping county residents for over a year throughout the pandemic. My job, along with my team, was behind the scenes to make sure that frontline workers had the necessary resources to do their jobs. We worked to continue approving payroll and paying the county's bills ensuring that the many services that the Albany County supports would continue. In my first year, I had the financial experience and wherewithal to accomplish these goals. I will be discussing the 2020 year-end financial results, the 2021 progress so far, and looking forward. In 2020, I hit the ground running. There was lots to do during an unprecedented economic year. Let's start with the 2020 financial results. The required New York State annual financial report was due May 1st. This annual financial report, referred to as the AUD or the AFR, is a report that was filed on time, again, for the second time. This was a great accomplishment by my accounting team. Also, there were additional hurdles this year that we had to overcome including steady state and federal updates that directly impacted the county's financials. As you can see on slide four, the county's revised budget was $753.5 million. Both the county's actual revenue and expenses came in below budget. Unfortunately, revenues were 8.5% below budget and expenses could only be controlled by 6.3% against the original budget therefore leaving a deficit. Slide five compares 2019's actual results to 2020 actuals. As you can see, the general fund revenue was down $40.6 million or 7%. This was primarily due to sales tax revenue not materializing during the pandemic. Even though the first quarter showed an increase in sales tax revenues, after March, 2020, once the pandemic hit, sales tax revenue for the county was down $12 million, 7% by year end. To help mitigate the loss in revenue, steps were taken to control expenses, including establishing a committee to fill for all new hires, re-examining and refunding a portion of the county's debt, and responsibly analyzing new capital projects with the administration during a pandemic. The re result was borrowing less for new capital projects. Unfortunately, the decrease in revenues outpaced the decrease in county's expenses, which declined by only 4.3%. This resulted in a deficit of $15.5 million. As you can see on slide six, the 2020 fund balance is now $55.2 million. Fund balance is an accounting term it is essentially the accumulation of annual surpluses, or money the county has built up for future use. There was a $13.6 million decrease in fund balance, largely due to the decline in sales tax revenue. On a positive note, the debt reserve went up by $19 million, from $17 million to $36 million. Debt reserve is cash set aside that can be used to pay the principal, and interest on the, an, on the county's annual debt payments. The county's increased reserves is an important metric that the credit rating agencies will view positively. Another positive to recognize is a chart on slide seven, identifying the long-term debt comparison by year. I'd like to point out in 2020, the overall long-term debt decreased by $35.2 million to $296.7 million, an 11% decrease. This was the result of responsible borrowing of only $4.1 million of new debt for capital projects during a pandemic and the refunding of $11 million of the county's outstanding debt. To put things in perspective, 
As I mentioned, the debt reserve increased by $19 million as we closed out completed capital projects and cleaned up the books. Even though there was a decrease in fund balance by $13.6 million, the county had ample fund balance to weather the financial storm caused by the pandemic. It should be noted, the fund balance decrease would, all, would have been $5.6 million. However, the county opted to leave $8 million of excess funding in its medical reserve. County Executive McCoy deserves credit for building up the county's fund balance over the past nine years, more than double from the $23 million when he entered office. In 2020, revenue-related factors were driven by net sales tax, which declined by $12 million. During the pandemic, many people turned to online shopping and restaurant delivery and pickup. There were significant lost revenues related to dining and other entertainment venues. Unfortunately, dining and event-driven sales tax is not recoverable, like retail-driven sales tax. On slide nine, Note that hotel occupancy tax also decreased significantly from $8.1 million in 2019 to $4.2 million in 2020. The recovery from the effects of the pandemic is ongoing. Next, I would like to discuss Shaker Place Rehabilitation and Nursing Center, the county operated nursing home. In 2020, the team at Shaker Place completed its historic $80 million renovation that transformed it into a state-of-the-art facility. Obviously, there were many additional pandemic-related expenses that were unanticipated. We expect that approximately $2 million of these expenses will, will be reimbursed by FEMA. Unfortunately, the pandemic also limited Shaker Place's ability to accept new residences. Additionally, many people that were forced to work from home chose to also become caregivers to aging relatives. We anticipate that census, the occupancy, will increase going forward, driven by the best facility available in the area. The Comptroller's Office is taking steps to provide cash flow relief to Shaker Place. I will discuss this further as part of my 2021 goals. Next, I would like to speak about our 2021 progress so far and trends to keep an eye on. Albany County will receive $59.3 million in direct federal aid as part of President Biden's American Rescue Plan. Half has been received already and the remainder will be received within the next 12 months. The use of the stimulus money is approved by the legislature based on federal guidance including covering lost revenues and pandemic-related expenses. I strongly recommend the use for the lost revenue is imperative as we may have a shortfall at year-end again. I bring this key recommendation to your attention. It is essential that the existing operating cash flow needs of the county are met within the allowable categories before increased spending is identified. At the end of 2020, in order to meet cash flow needs, the county proactively borrowed $40 million via a tax anticipation note. Simply put, in December 2020, we ran out of cash in the general fund. The good thing is that we were able to borrow at an extremely low rate, 0.25%, and we took advantage of prepayment discounts on some payments including the county's annual pension payment, therefore saving nearly $250,000 after our borrowing cost. Net sales tax through May has already seen a bump year over year by approximately $3 million. We are trending in a positive direction from this time last year. Additionally, mortgage tax should continue to show increases and hotel occupancy tax should also increase now that the pandemic has slowed. Slide 13 summarizes a few of our 2020 achievements. I've already discussed the county's debt and debt reserve, but I would like to highlight the controlled expenses within the controller's office. In 2020, our office 
was vigilant about spending, which resulted in finishing the year $300,000 under budget in my department alone. The Comptroller's Office alone achieved the age-old goal. We were on time and under budget. Slide 14 highlights additional achievements in 2020. S&P reaffirmed the county's stellar AA credit rating at a stable outlook, whereas the other municipalities were downgraded. Just prior to the pandemic, we maximized the county's return on investments by working with the Department of Management and Budget to invest in higher yielding, risk-free investments. The graph on slide 15 illustrates the county's cash flow within the general fund. Even with the federal stimulus funds, as of April 2021, the Department of Management and Budget projected a negative cash flow by the end of this year. We will continue to monitor this, but we stress, do not earmark additional appropriations against the stimulus this year. The money should be used to offset lost revenues. We're not out of the woods yet. Next, I would like to look forward into the next half of 2021 and discuss my goals as the Albany County Comptroller. Sales Tax Update Slide 17 provides a summary of the county's first quarter sales tax revenues. Although the first quarter, which ended March 31st, showed a decrease of $1.4 million, sales tax receipts have picked up the pace in May with a 40% increase from the same period last year. As vaccination levels increase, this positive trend should continue, but we should still proceed with caution. Slide 18 highlights some signs of a local economic recovery. Travel through the airport has picked up. Sales tax is trending in the right direction. COVID restrictions for in-person dining and entertainment venues are being lifted which should help the sales tax revenues significantly. Goals. As I alluded to earlier, we are attempting to provide cash flow relief to the nursing home. The Comptroller's Office is currently working with our fiscal advisor, the State Comptroller, and both houses of the State Legislature to refund $27.2 million of Shaker Place debt. This is debt related to the completed renovation we are working to correct the repayment period of this debt to 20 years from its current 11-year term. A 20-year term will match the Medicaid reimbursement rate and provide an initial annual cash flow relief of approximately $1.9 million. Also, we are working with the Sheriff's Department to audit 911 revenues. By state law, the telephone customers are charged 35 cents per month on their phone bill. We are analyzing county's emergency 911 center expenses to justify a surcharge increase to fully cover expenses allowable by New York state law. We feel we could justify an increase from only 35 cents to $1 per month to fully cover 911 related expenses. Finally, my team is implementing an accounts receivable module in the current accounting system to better track revenues. Currently, tracking receivables is decentralized and done at the department level. By centralizing this function, the county can accurately track monies due and collect these in a more timely manner. In conclusion, I will leave you with the following. Albany County's strong financial position was invaluable to get through the pandemic. The Comptroller's Office will continue to work with various county departments to address any financial issues that could be improved. However, we need to remain vigilant and make financially sound decisions going forward until the new normal is clear. This includes being conservative with allocating federal stimulus monies. This concludes my presentation of the State of the Fisc. Thank you for your attention. See you next year.